Hey guys, uh, welcome to the very first episode <laughs> of the Spicy Podcast. Well, Spice. Hi, <laughs> my, my name's Anne. I'm Ashley. And we are going to be the host of this podcast. Uh, I thought we should start off by introducing ourselves since this is going to be posted on two different channels and you know some people might be might not be familiar with us. Yeah. I guess I, I guess I'll do that first. Hi, my name's <laughs> Anne and uh, <laughs> And uh, I'm from the channel IE or IE Pro. Um, I am going to be 22 years old next month. I am a Vietnamese American because uh, my parents are from Vietnam. I'm into playing video games, streaming, uh, watching anime, uh, listening to music, and I am currently majoring in uh, computer science. I'm trying to get a career in uh, computer programming and all that. <laughs> my name is ashley aka nerdy girl adventures aka ash ketchum the best pokemon trainer in the world uh but no um i am white i'm as <laughs> pale as they do. <laughs> uh my grandfather was actually born in holland so i do have european in my bloodline oh, cool. um i didn't know that yeah my dad I uh, was actually born in Germany as well. He was unplanned. Like, they were going to have him in America, but it didn't work. So, boom, he was in Germany. Hmm. <laughs> uh, but I also love to play video games, stream, watch anime. Uh, food is my life. Uh, <laughs> naps are great. I yeah. mean, I can't go wrong with a nice nap. <laughs> <laughs> we use pretty much spent the, the, this whole day just taking rounds and rounds of naps. Yes, one long nap. Like, yeah. Uh, you ever do that thing, you're like, oh, 30 more minutes. Nah, you know what? Just 30 more minutes. <laughs> <laughs> one hour later. Yeah. Oh, what time is it? <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh gosh. I had a schedule and the schedule was not what it was. And I'm like, eh. mm-hmm. Do you like to uh, stay up late at night? Yeah, I'm more of a night owl. But yeah, same here. I feel like night owls are like more creative than like day people i guess you could say mm-hmm. like um, there's this thing called daydreamer night thinker i am mm-hmm. a night thinker but just does that just mean you think better at night or like indeed my creative ideas come out at night and i'm just like more like oh and i get i could be like a philosopher or whatever at night i'm like so is this the meaning of life <laughs> or write this <laughs> shit down I'm gonna get this on paper. <laughs> you sometimes like think about all these cool ideas at night. Next day, you're all like, oh, "Shit, I forgot about I forgot about everything." Yes. <laughs> yes. What was I talking about again? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think I feel the, I'm like the same way. Like at night, I have like the best ideas. Yes. Like uh, there was an idea last night, or some. We were talking because I was playing Dead by Daylight. Okay. And they were like, oh, I used to play outside at like 3 a.m. Because I live near wooded area. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I'm down. Oh, man. Like, I'll probably piss my pants while I'm yeah. out here and get the cops hold on me for a disturbance, but I'm down. <laughs> I don't think I could do that. Oh, I love things scary until things start going like bump in the night. And then that's where I'm like, oh, my God, what did I do? <laughs> But what if you go in the woods and you start seeing like these pages like hanging on the wall? Oh. <laughs> I would be out. I would be okay. Um, <laughs> the forest field like preventing me from leaving. <laughs> like, oh, no, I would die. <laughs> I didn't know you uh, lived next to the woods. Have you actually like been at the woods before? Yeah, I've gone inside the woods, and it's, like the thing is, like right across my street. It's like very wooded. They're starting to tear it down though, but like they're everywhere. <laughs> like oh, they're starting to tear it down. Yeah, they're. I think they're building a house, mm, another okay. house. They're building something mm. on the land, but it's been causing all the animals to come out of hiding. So I've been seeing like weird, like beaver-looking things, <laughs> like, coyotes, um, deer, yeah, little yeah. things. Bunnies are everywhere this season, man. Like bunnies everywhere. Yeah. They're, they're they're like they're like Pokemon. You gotta catch them. <laughs> Bunnelby, <laughs> I choose you. <laughs> I 
I remember, oh, I remember when um when Pokemon Go first came out. Me, me and my bro used to drive around trying to catch stuff and when I see a cat walking by I'm be like Oh my god, there's a Pokemon right there. Let's go after it. It's Meowth. It's Perlin. Let's get it. Persian, I choose you. <laughs> so what kind of anime are you into? Um, I'm pretty open to anything really. I feel like anime like has the ability to make us be interested and like anything like for for example like i'm not really into sports but when there's an anime about like a certain sport it just happens to be really interesting yeah i feel you on that one yeah because i've never been into baseball but you know this anime called ace of diamonds or something like that uh mm-hmm. my brother showed it to me i thought oh this is really cool it was really interesting yeah i, I feel you on that one like uh you don't have to be into a certain genre to necessarily get into an anime in that genre per se. Like, mm. because of how diverse they make the an- like, they're starting to make them a little bit more repetitive lately. Like, with oh, yeah? the same kind of general idea. But I mean, they're still interesting, you mm. know. Mm. Like, like uh, I never thought I could be interested in figure skating, but there's an anime about figure skating. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, which one I'm talking about, right? Like Yuri on Ice. Yuri on Ice, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, and like, you know, horror anime is like, like a really good horror anime is really, really to me, it's personally hard to find because mm. I feel like you know different cultures have different senses of what's terrifying. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, one that I think is really good is like uh, I'm trying to think. I had it on the tip of my tongue. Mm-hmm. I think another, I think Corpse Party, I think those are some really, really freaky. It's, <laughs> like, I would be scared if that happened to me. I would be like out of there. I'd be like, I'm, I'm, I'm dropped out of school. You'll never hear from me. <laughs> is, is that actually, is, is that also an anime or is it just a game? Because I only heard about the game. Yeah. They made, I think they made like a, I don't know if it's a necessarily flink anime, but I, I believe that there are some OVAs. Oh, okay. From- yeah. Why are gonna make corpse parties pretty messed up? I, I I don't know much about. It. I just know a lot of people die in there. <laughs> oh, it gets brutal. Oh, like, man. and then there are manga uh, about it as well, which I've read in there. Mm-hmm. They're very graphic, but I find them to be intriguing. Just don't That's get true. attached to any of the characters. <laughs> <laughs> like, they, they say I should love all of them. <laughs> yep, fall in love with all the characters, and then uh, yeah, it'll all be okay. <laughs> They all escape. No, no, nobody dies in, in yeah, corpse party. Yeah. Nobody, and they don't <laughs> die in another either. I mean, false advertisement. So you, you're saying they should show that to people, so to kids in elementary. I got gotcha. you. <laughs> Just like Bokum, they should show them Bokum no Pico. Too. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, my, uh, my brother came up with a funny idea for like no. Mm-hmm. Said that I should just review hentais, but never mention the fact that are actually hentais. So <laughs> if I if I were to review Boku no Pico, I'd be oh yeah, it's a bunch of bunch of guys who are really good friends and they have lots of awesome adventures, especially in the bedroom. But they, yeah, they're really good friends. It's all, all about right. it's all about the the, the story of friendship. <laughs> Yeah, you'll never know what happens each day. It's a new, it's a new adventure each day. <laughs> Spicy. <laughs> so when uh, talk, uh, going back to Pokemon Go, when that first came out, when you were you into it? Or? Oh, I was like, I literally wasted my data all night. <laughs> yeah. And now I, I don't really play it as much because I don't get out of the house. So mm-hmm. it's like. There's not a lot of good Pokemon in my backyard and, and in my neighborhood, so I'm like kind of yeah. like, mm, whatever. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah back what about in, you? Are you playing the Pokemon Go? Uh, back in the day, yeah, when it first came out during that summer, it was it was pretty cool going around, seeing all these people, uh, oh, being yeah. re- being really into it. You see lots of people parking at one this one place that was like a good uh, that was like a Poke stop, and you see people putting mm-hmm. down like uh, those modules or whatever those are called, yeah. those little yeah. yeah. 
Dude, but like you, and then you've seen like the YouTube videos and stuff. Like people found dead bodies and stuff. Like oh god, <laughs> yeah. That scared me. Like I was like, okay, what if I walk, or what if I go somewhere and then there's just like a dead body or like some like pervert just waiting there, and I'm like, mm. yeah, yeah. I, I saw the like this one streamer who was spoke he streamed himself playing Pokemon Go and he got beat up and robbed. Yeah. I thought that was crazy. Like people were using that game as an advantage to, yeah, do criminal activities. Yeah, and I was like, uh, the park that I live kind of close by, there's a dead body there too. But I don't know if that's related to Pokemon Go or not. I just know there's a dead oh. body over there. <laughs> oh, that's scary. <laughs> but yeah, that's um, why you should just always just go with a go with a buddy if you're gonna play Pokemon Go. Make sure that they know how to fight too, in case they need yeah. to save you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Real, remember to uh remember to bring a maze uh katana and you know the nunchucks yeah just the normal things the uh <laughs> kunai knife you know yeah yeah exactly <laughs> but yeah I, w I wish they updated that uh really quickly because i think because they took too long to update it, people lost mm -hmm. interest because you know after po catching the same pokemon for so long you get kind of bored yeah. you know i agree uh, especially with the new generations that are actually out in the anime and in the game series, mm -hmm. uh, Pokemon Go was a little behind for a little while, but now I feel like the updates are uh, a little bit more efficient and frequent, and it kind of mm -hmm. helps with um, you know in intriguing people and, and getting them back into it. I, I think the, the problem I have with it right now is that there's still no battles. Like you can't battle yeah. a ram person. I would love that. Mm -hmm. They they re recently. Oh, sorry. Go on. I was just saying that's how you make a friendship, right there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Cause... I challenge you. <laughs> it's like they recently just add trading, and that took so long. Mm -hmm. And the way that trading works, it, it's kind of weird because I think you only trade to trade with a person. I think you got to wait for a long time to actually start the trading. Mm. And then like uh, you can only trade one pokemon like one kind of pokemon to that person so like let's say i give you one pikachu that's it i can never give you any more pikachus what okay yeah. i think that's bullcrap right there <laughs> like what if i want a million pikachus i'm gonna get a million Pikachus. <laughs> yeah but i think it's because like uh you know how some people keep uh, they keep ratatas or pidgeys just so they can evolve them to like level up faster mm -hmm. yeah this is because it's, they're trying to keep people from like you know giving one person like a thousand pidgeys just so this one person could like use all those to level up and stuff. I think that's mm -hmm. what. Yeah, I see your point. So, like going back to like uh, video games, what kind of uh, what kind of games are you into? Like uh, you know older games, newer games, uh, kind of modern, you know. Oh um, I'm pretty I'm pretty open to. Anything really, anything that's fun, <laughs> which is I guess kind of okay. weird because I, I feel like most people, uh, around my age, they're all like new stuff only, no, new, 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 you know, no, no old stuff. Yeah. But, but no, I'm open to like playing old games, you know. Dude, I feel you. Like I feel like a lot of people who just stick to the newer games are really missing out. Like uh, mm -hmm. with all the older Mario games, like Legend of Zelda games, mm -hmm. uh, Donkey Kong. You know they're missing out there are some awesome games out there yeah yeah for sure because there's a lot of awesome games and like yeah oh yeah while growing up you're not you might not be able to like play them all you know? mm -hmm. it's good to go back and see like what you missed i agree I, I definitely agree with that and then as you age i feel for me personally a lot of people are going digital now they like their games digital mm -hmm. I, like, I mean Certain games I don't mind in digital, but I like more. I like to have mine more in uh, the copy version. Yeah. You know, so that way I have them, and that way, uh, you know, eventually, whenever I have children down the line, or whenever I decide to like have nieces or nephews or whatever, and, and mm. if they get into video games, you know, I have that, and I can show them like, hey, this is what they look like, you know, and set it up and let them play and yeah, give them yeah, a taste yeah. of experience. Yeah. I get you. I also like. I mean, I, I do like having digital games. It's just because, like, 
if you go over over to a friend's place, you don't have to bring the game with you. You just you know turn on the Xbox or whatever and load it up on there. Yeah, I mean that's also a nice perk, but at the same mm. time, it's like my main worry is is getting hacked, and then everything oh, yeah. that everything that I've worked so hard to get just being gone, you know, because mm. that's money adds up really quickly, especially when you're buying games. Yeah, yeah, I got you. I do, I do enjoy having physical copies of the game as well because I like putting them on the bookshelf and looking at my collection. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I love that. I love just being like and taking pictures and being able to show people like, hey, you know, this is what I've got. Like, yeah. uh, and I'm still expanding. Mm. Uh, I think back in the day, I I used to enjoy opening up the cases and. Getting the, the the manuals out and reading those just for fun. Yes, it's such a, a very refreshing feeling. <laughs> it's it's sad that they don't have like those manuals anymore. Those like those booklets telling you about the yeah, characters, about like the story and all that. All they have now is just they're just gonna tell you like the controls and that's it. <laughs> I know, and then they expect you to remember them. Like I'm not gonna remember all that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So if, if we were to only go, if the games are only digital from now on, would you be pretty upset? Uh, I would be kind of in the middle. Uh, you know, like you said, it's a convenience, mm -hmm. but there's always that worry of maybe my account will get hacked and I'll lose everything. Yeah, like I mean, I've got some digital copies online, like um, you know, and they and they've been fine, but. <laughs> You just have to make sure that your credit card or your bank card or whatever, because I have a story like where I bought a game for twenty dollars, it overdrafted me, I didn't find out, and I spent a hundred dollars on the game. Oh Jesus, really? Yeah, yeah, it was it was Final Fantasy fifteen too, and I was so pissed. What did you try to buy it on? Uh, I bought it off of the PlayStation Network, and I was supposed to use uh, someone else's card. They were like, "Okay, you can use mine." Uh, and, uh, yeah, it put mine in instead, and oh. I didn't notice, because we have, uh, the same last four digits on the card. Oh, okay, that's understandable. And, yeah, and I was like, oh, hmm. and, yeah, it was a whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Did you yeah. contact, the uh, Sony about it and ask if they could help you out, or? No, I just paid it off. I mean, it was my mistake anyway. Mm -hmm. I, I couldn't have really expected a company or like the PlayStation Network to mm -hmm. be like, "Oh, we feel bad for you, child. We'll help you." Yeah, <laughs> I uh, I think I I don't know if you told you this story before, but I remember one time I uh, was on eBay and you know I was mm -hmm. trying to buy stuff on eBay and I had my uh, debit card saved on there. Mm -hmm. Uh, I remember one day I, I just randomly looked out at my phone to look at my uh account balance like all the money i have and for some reason there's a charge of five hundred dollars <laughs> oh my god and i was like huh <laughs> i don't remember buying anything for five hundred dollars apparently someone like went on my ebay account and used my card to buy themselves uh a camera that cost five hundred dollars and they also very lived in texas as well and when I heard that, like when I realized that, I was really tempted to be like, okay, I'm gonna find out where this guy is and beat the shit out of him or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I'm a, I, I would have like found the number for that person and be like, I will find you. <laughs> do that kind of thing. Like, freak yeah. him out and be like, you owe me 500 freaking dollars. Yeah. But well, luckily, uh. What's up? I would have been like, plus tax. <laughs> plus tax. <laughs> but, uh,. I was lucky enough to um, call in for support, and they were like, oh, okay, we understand, and they gave me the 500 back, and also, uh, I canceled the order, so that motherfucker never got his camera, so you can take that shit. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, yeah. I would have, like, I would have gone for it, like, I would have been like, okay, <laughs> you know what? Since you want to play that, I'll play it, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, I hate people that do that. <laughs> yeah, for sure. From 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 um, after that, I made sure to like up the security on my accounts, or just like not say my debit card information on those accounts, because you know someone can easily just get on it and be like, "Hey, there's a saved card on here. I'm gonna use that." 
Yeah, I never, I never save a card or a password or anything to any of my accounts because of that reason. Mm. Like, uh, you know, since technology has become such a huge thing, I feel like it's even easier to access information that was once like very private mm. and secure. Uh, so that's what terrifies me as we continue to advance into a world more technological. Mm-hmm. As, yeah, repercussions of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So going back to uh, you being a huge lover, <laughs> are you like, yeah. are you open to like trying any kind of food, even if, even if it sounds weird or even if it looks weird? Oh, yeah. oh definitely. Like uh, my brother, he's over living over in Holland right now. And, you know, from what I've been told, the food over there is, like, really bland. Like, mm-hmm. they don't like a lot of flavor. Oh, really? Versus, oh, he loves flavor. But versus he has his fiance. She's from China. And the mm-hmm. Chinese food is all about flavor and, uh, like, really good seasoning and stuff like that. And, oh, my God, like, uh, we went to uh, a Chinese restaurant while they were back in town. Yeah, yeah. And, uh you know, she was speaking to the lady uh, in their native tongue and everything, and she was, like, basically telling her that uh, if it just me and my brother would have walked in here, they wouldn't have made it, like, as spicy as they did because mm. they, they, don't, they don't think that most Americans can handle it. And I was just sitting there eating it like, what do you mean? <laughs> put, you mean? put all oh, that no. spice in there. <laughs> put more? What do you mean? Spice it up. <laughs> and his, uh, my brother's fiancé looked at me eating the food, and she's like, Oh my god! She's like, you can handle that. You like that? I'm like, yeah, it's good. <laughs> yeah. She's like, oh my, god, okay. Mm-hmm. Like she was like happy. She's like, okay. Mm-hmm. I wish I could have like, but I I don't know how to explain it. Mm-hmm. Certain taste buds where I can be open to like eating anything because I feel like there might be something where I might eat it. You know, like oh, this mm-hmm. tastes weird. Yeah. Just because I'm not used to it. Yeah, and that's really. I mean, that's like. That's understandable as well because I mean there are some people uh, who are actually like open to trying new foods like and they don't have the taste buds for it but they're open and then there are other people who have the taste buds but they're just like not open to trying any new foods they're comfortable with what they know yeah yeah which yeah, I feel yeah. like the way like if you stay in a comfortable state like you'll never know what all is out there yeah exactly you gotta get out of your comfort zone exactly. Uh, I feel like that's the same in any aspect of life, you know. I feel like uh, if you stay in one place for too long or if you get too comfortable, you'll never really experience what the world truly has to offer. Yeah, 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 for sure. I just got deep there. (laughs) I know. (laughs) Talking about, (laughs) starting with us talking about food too. See, like, I can turn, like, I don't know. I think for me, food is a a thing that can bring down barriers. Like, I mean... Mm -hmm. Like, uh, you know, it's something that people can enjoy and just discuss without having to bring anything else into the conversation other than just, oh, my God, this food is really good. Like, let's go get some food. I mean, yeah, yeah. like, you don't even have to like me. And, and if you offer me to take me to go get food, like, I'll be like, yeah, yeah let's, let's go get food. Yeah. Let's bond over it. <laughs> <laughs> what's, what's like the, let's say, what's like the weirdest thing you say you've eaten before? Uh, I used to work at a Japanese steakhouse. Mm. And I would say the weirdest thing that I've ever eaten is a fish head with the eyeball still intact. Oh wow! <laughs> okay. So I was just and I came home and I told my parents because I was sixteen at the time, oh, and they're okay. like, "You eat that?" And I'm like, "Yeah." She's like, "But it was looking at you." <laughs> like I didn't eat the eyeball, but I ate everything around it. It was good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, don't, I don't know if I eaten fish with the. I probably not. I think every time I eat fish, it's just like the parts after the head so i never got to see eyeballs in the mouth and all that i don't know if i'll be able to eat that if i had to look at me oh it was interesting it was an interesting experience for sure i know in uh vietnam they have this like they have a dish where it's like noodle Mm -hmm. soup they also have this (laughs) they they also have this thing uh that, that comes with it it's it's it looks like a like a brown gel thing and Ooh. It's, it, it's actually pig's blood. Oh. <laughs> yeah. And like for for the longest time, like I, I ate that while growing up and I asked my mom what it was. I remember when I asked her, she was all like, oh, it's, it's just chocolate. Yeah, it's just chocolate. <laughs> and now later on growing up, I'll, 
What's that? <laughs> and and you liked eating it? I, yeah, it tasted alright. It's it was, I think oh, it's supposed no. to provide you like iron and protein and all that. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So after a while, when I realized it was actually actually pig's blood, I was like, oh okay. I understand why my mom didn't tell me what it actually was when I was a kid. Because I think if I was a kid, knowing that, I think I would probably freak out. <laughs> yeah, I'd be like, oh my god, what do you mean it's pig's blood? Where did you get this? <laughs> I think, I guess another thing that be might be kind of weird for me to eat was frog. Oh, I love frog. Like, frog legs are really good. Mm, yeah, I agree. I think I've only eaten them because they offer them at uh, like a China buffet. Yes. <laughs> yes. They taste so freaking good, though, and I'm just like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I I guess it's kind of weird though, because like it's not like a common type of meat people would usually eat. You know, people would usually eat like chicken, pork, maybe yeah. fish. No one's always. No one's gonna be all like, oh yeah, I eat I eat de- uh frogs daily. <laughs> <laughs> right. I eat turtles, frogs, and alligators. <laughs> what's uh what's another thing that you tried before? Uh, I'm trying to think. Uh personally I haven't eaten any like I haven't had the opportunity to eat like many weird foods, but I know my brother, uh, he's eaten kangaroo. Oh wow. he's eaten alligator, snake. I mean he's eaten a lot of different things. Hmm. Which is a pretty interesting thing in general and he said that they tasted good so i'm like i'll take your word for it yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> poor kangaroo i can just imagine his back legs kicking as he's being <laughs> into it. <laughs> poor kanga <laughs> poor oh i didn't even notice that like in like when i was little because you know how the mom's name is kanga and the baby's name is Rue. I didn't put two and two together until I got older, and I realized that Kanga and Rue together mean kangaroo, and they're kangaroos. Oh, you know what? <laughs> I, I never really thought about that, so I guess I learned something new. <laughs> I literally didn't know that, and I was like, as I got older, I'm like, Kanga, Rue. <laughs> I can imagine you like alone in your room, and you're like putting pictures <laughs> of like kangaroos on the wall, and you're like connecting the dots, and you're all like. <gasps> <laughs> It all makes sense now. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. That's just like with Tigger, like being a tiger, and they just put an extra G. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Are but you... what's Woody the Pooh? Like, what's, what, where does the bear part come into play? Because Piglet's a pig. Mm-hmm. Rabbit is a rabbit. <laughs> There's an owl, I mean. Are they, like, confirming that there's a new species out there called a Winnie the Pooh? Like... I don't know, that's, that's a good question. I bet they somehow it can relate to, like, a bear. Like, maybe it's... It means, like, a bear in another language or something. <laughs> no, it probably does. That'd be interesting to, like, look into. But who has time for that? <laughs> like, to just look into a kid's show and be like, okay. Mm, this means something. No, it's up now. Are you are you uh are you excited for that Christopher Robin movie? I am. It's like my child. I don't. I'm not sure how I feel about like them actually being like more realistic. I guess mm. you could say. Like I yeah. don't know. I, it's gonna be interesting. Yeah. I think that, I thought they looked pretty cute when you when I, first showed them off. Yeah. I mean, I. It's just like one of those things where it's like. You kind of want it to come out because you want to relive your childhood, but at the same time, you don't want them to botch it and just like completely wish, like ruin it. Yeah, yeah. I think the. Like the... I'm sorry, go on. Oh, my bad. Uh, but like Incredibles too. Like I haven't seen that, but I've heard so many people say that it was so amazing. Like that mm. it was like they loved it. That it, they they needed that. Mm. Like. So I, I mean, it just depends on like the movie and if they yeah. completely should have left it alone i love the fact that i didn't watch incredibles 2 but i love the fact mm-hmm. that uh the movie pretty much starts like five minutes after the first movie ended i thought that was pretty yeah cool. and it came out so many years later yeah yeah but the, the one thing i don't know if you know about this but I, did you hear about how incredibles 2 
uh people some i think some kids got seizures from watching it really yeah because there was like i forgot what it was it's, i think it's like some kind of machine that has some really intense lights flashing and mm. because of that it caused kids to like have seizures and all and i thought like dude like you, you did not like check this like first of all this is a kids movie so lots of kids are gonna watch it yeah and also like those those lights must like those lights are dangerous you know <laughs> Yeah, especially for people with epilepsy. Mm-hmm. Like that's just like the the band Pokemon episode. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just thinking about that too. I'm scared to watch that. Like, if I ever was able to get a cold of a copy, I would be scared to watch it just oh, because yeah. of the. I'd be like, I would want to test it out, but I wouldn't want to have like a seizure on it. Like, yeah, yeah, I got you. I think I've only seen the small part of it from uh from youtube and i was yeah. all like okay that that is a little weird like what would they do that like just like, the whole screen like there's nothing else just, like, the whole screen was just flashing colors yeah but i mean i think at the time uh they didn't really understand like how that kind of thing could affect the brain and cause seizures or cause like any harm like they were probably just thinking oh it's colorful kids are gonna love this like, <laughs> yeah yeah it's gonna work mm. and then boom the lawsuits piled in yeah thinking back on there like so many banned episodes from pokemon or like yeah yeah <laughs> oh, guns yeah that one with guns and where like i think that in that same episode ash caught all those tauruses right yeah and so when i saw like they never showed an episode in america but like they showed all those tauruses like in uh in a movie japan oh okay and like uh, they show it like because they show a collection of all like the po- Pokemon like Ashcott, so they show mm-hmm. show those Tauruses. I'm like, w- w- when the fuck did he ever catch those? I don't remember that. Yeah. That's like one thing that I don't like though is like how America kind of like picks and chooses what they decide to view or what Japan gives us based on like mm-hmm. you know because like Japan like they'll have everything out and we'll never know until we go back years later and like look into it and be like oh my god like there's more or like that yeah yeah, yeah. exactly yeah it's like japan please adopt me <laughs> you <all> your anime <laughs> i mean I, I guess i can understand why the episode is banned though because like the gun and stuff i don't know how they would yeah. able, able to censor that yeah i can understand that i mean especially with all the gun violence that is happening you know mm-hmm. today in this day and age but i mean mm-hmm. you know I don't know. <laughs> just one of those things. Did you ever? Did you, I think this episode wasn't banned from America, but a certain part of it was cut out because, like, Jesse. The beauty pageant one. What's up? The Is beauty, it the beauty pageant one? Yeah, that, that's the one that James has like huge ass <laughs> boobs and stuff. <laughs> I was like, James, honey, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Is there something you need to tell us? <laughs> They're in the. Um, I better just show you try watching the show like in Japanese. I haven't. I think you might enjoy it a bit more. Probably. I actually have to give that a try now. That sounds interesting. Yeah, because I remember I was watching the Japanese version with my bro and his friend, and it just it actually feels different. Show Ooh, feels actually, show I have feels a good different. question for you. What's up? What was the first anime you ever saw? I actually don't know. Because I remember watching a lot of anime as a kid. I just don't know which... I, I, I don't know how to narrow it down to be like, okay, that's, that was the very first one. You know what I mean? What was... Uh, let me let me rephrase this. What was the first anime that you realized was an anime? Oh, like, uh... It's Dragon Ball Z. Dragon Ball Z. Dragon Ball Z or like... Hmm... I'm not sure. Cause I remember back in the day, like they had WB Kids, and like yeah, they, oh my god, I love that channel. They need to bring it back. And they had Toonami, and they still have Toonami now. But like back in the day, that yeah. was like the only way I watched anime. And I think back in the day, I remember watching like Pokemon, Yu Gi Oh, uh, Dragon Ball, King. Shaman King. Yeah, <laughs> I was, no Shaman King, and then uh, Dragon Ball Z, Yu Gi Hakusho. Yu Show. Yes, Detective Conan. I actually never watched that show. That show was really good. I watched bits and pieces. It just kind of got annoying to me after a while. Like, oh, wow. I just I couldn't watch it. Oh, how, how did it get annoying? I just, 
I fell out of it. You know, like how sometimes you can watch something and you're like, oh my god, like I can watch this, and it's just like after a while, like I just they can't. Hmm. <laughs> they feel like repetitive. Yeah, in a sense, I guess you could say. Mm. That's just like um, I don't know, like my first anime. It was I remember it clearly. Like the first anime that I I figured out was anime. Uh, it was. It's called Chrono Crusade, and it was so freaking good. Like, I love that anime. And, like, uh, my brother was watching it, my older brother. And he was like, oh, sit down, you know, uh, watch this with me. At first, I'm like, what is this? Like, it's not even in English. Like, what? <laughs> <laughs> and it has the subtitles, and I'm like, are you really, is he really going to make me sit down and watch this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, like, the more I started watching it, the more I'm like, oh, okay, I can get into this. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, after that, it got me hooked. And then I made a friend who was into anime as well. And uh, after that, I watched Vampire Night. And that was like the second one I had ever watched. Mm -hmm. And then from there, I just started spending my summertime half of school just watching anime all summer. That sounds pretty cool. Uh, it was. I have to and then, check like, those out. The Dragon Ball Z's, the Pokemon, you know, the, the basics. I, I realized after a while that those were considered anime as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I remember when the. I remember a time when first time Naruto and Bleach came to America. Oh my god, I do too. Bleach was so big in Naruto. Like when they first came, they were like booming. And like now they're still booming. And now there's Boruto. And mm. I think. I don't think there's a spinoff of Bleach. I hope they, didn't, yeah. they don't go that far. I think I, I watched a video. Uh, explaining why Bleach died out. Because <laughs> I guess it just, it just died out. I guess it lost popularity. Especially, like, you know how um, Naruto, Bleach, and some other stuff, they're, like, on this thing called, like, Shonen Jump? Like, like that yeah. manga thing? Yeah. I, be I think eventually people lost interest. I mean, so that Shonen Jump thing kind of showed that uh, because mm -hmm. it, people, it got people to vote on, like, what they're most interested in in those uh, manga series, in those books. Mm -hmm. And, like, Bleach started going downhill. Like the the popularity went down. I feel like I feel like Bleach kind of got repetitive. I feel like there were more fillers as the story like went on, mm. and uh, there was never really a clear love interest. And I feel like who they shipped him with at the end just kind of like I mean, I really liked him and Ruki at first. I mean, Orihime is great. Like I love her. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just would have preferred to see them together, but I mean, I've heard that where he may end up with him, which I mean, great, you know, cool. I did. I didn't even know that. <laughs> That's how much I That's kept up with it. People told me like I couldn't keep up with it. Like I watched. I have the first two seasons. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, and I just I can't. I, I'm like, <laughs> hey, the season where they uh, went after Rukia and try to save her in the Soul Society. I thought that was really good. I really yeah. enjoyed that. Basically, I feel like the anime in the the manga series, like I feel like, go like saying that it, it got really repetitive after a while, and you know, with bigger animes out there like Naruto and uh, Naruto Shippuden and mm. like things like that, people kept. I, I feel like they got interested in other things. Yeah, yeah. And like One Piece, One Piece like dominated, and uh, you know. Fairy tale, like all these anime started coming out that were kind of just overtaking Bleach. Yeah, like, and uh, I I heard like the reason why one of the reasons why Bleach kind of got boring because is because they kind they kind of did the same thing uh, over again. While the other yeah. animes like Naruto and One Piece, they go into new uh, uh, territories. Yeah. They 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 do different things, but with Bleach, they did they pretty much did the same thing. Like for example. Uh, when they went to save Rukia, they went to like another different place, and they yeah. after when they went to a different place, they you know learn all like they were learning about this new world, and they had to separate to fight to fight their own battles and all that. When they went mm -hmm. after or he made to rescue her, it was pretty much the same thing. <laughs> they go, they went to a different world again. Uh, they they separated. They had to go fight their own battles. Yeah, like, and I mean you know like. Uh that's the kind of thing that would disinterest me right away is if they were basically doing the same thing like with different characters but mm -hmm. doing the same kind of concept repeatedly like it would be overused like i don't know for me personally that's just how i feel 
Yeah, yeah. I'm sure a lot of people feel the same way. It was funny hearing about the creator, Leech, talk about like how he he loves he loves drawing cool shit, <laughs> and so when he makes when he makes anime and manga, he just wants to try to find an excuse to draw those things. <laughs> Honey, it's okay. I'm making money. <laughs> yeah. I wonder what like manga is and uh, anime like uh, you know people who create those things. I wonder what their significant others think like when they tell them that's what they're gonna do like for the first time. Like, oh, I'm gonna create an anime. I'm gonna create a, a manga. Yeah, and yeah, then yeah. Thinking, what the heck is this? What? <laughs> Get a job. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And then they get the, and then they end up making like a hit series, and people are just like, mm-hmm. they're just like so salty afterwards. Like, yeah. okay, you did it. Yeah, yeah. I didn't believe you, could, but you did it. I think that it, it, people are always like that uh, when it comes to uh, into like someone they know wanting to uh, be part of like entertainment in a way. Mm-hmm. Like like when if like someone wants to uh, you know make video games for a living, make uh, anime or like manga for a living, and like that, or their significant others would always be like, R- really? Like you really want to go into that? Right. I I, I completely agree with you on that. Like, I feel like it's a iffy kind of thing. Like either you're gonna find someone who supports you, mm. or you're gonna find someone who's just like thinking you're completely mad. Yeah. Yeah. But they they will only, I feel like they will only think that way until you show them all the money you're making. <laughs> until exactly. you, until you like you know show how successful you are, and you're all like, oh, okay, okay, I, yeah. I see where you're coming from. <laughs> yeah, they're like, oh, we believed in you from the start. And yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. You know, you say that when I got the money in my hand, huh? <laughs> yeah, exactly. As, that's how I feel. Uh, how, that's how I kind of feel with my parents right now, because my parents, uh, they they want me to study uh, medicine, like you know, be a doctor. Mm. And like, and I'm like, okay, I was thinking about doing that for a little bit, because you know, I, do, I already do like helping people out, and if I can help people get better, like be healthy, that's cool. I just find mm-hmm. myself enjoy working with computers more and that's why i want to get a career in that they're all like R- really you want you want <laughs> you want to do that you want you want to get a job I mean, doing computers instead of you know being a doctor i'm like you know yeah because like i'm pretty sure i can be successful and i'm sure i can yeah. make a lot of money from this so i think oh, they'll yeah yeah i think they'll feel that way until i show them like oh yeah i can i can be successful in this field Exactly, and uh, like my brother said, because my brother's a computer, uh, he's like a computer engineer or something like that, and he makes really good money. They actually hired him. He lived over here in the, in, uh, in America, and they hired him over to Europe, and he makes a ton more money over there than he ever would have over here. Mm. And I mean, they're literally they're all. He told me they're always hiring over in Europe, and they pay good money for uh, people who can work on computers very well. That's and, pretty. Cool. Uh, yeah, I mean, you really have a shot because I mean, the world's continuing to advance into a technological era. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, you, that's what my brother always. He told me, and he's like, "You need to get into a computer, you know, something that deals with computers because you will have a job for life." Because unless something changes in the next however yeah. many years, I mean, computers are gonna be huge. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You're like, or if you have, you're trying to get a career in computers, you're pretty much. Uh, Following and tra- following a, a trend, exactly of everything being advanced and stuff. Exactly, because like I did the same kind of thing. Like I, I did, I went to school for a little bit in high school. I went to vocational school to become like an STNA, mm. and I, I wasn't doing it for myself. I was doing it more because I wanted to follow in my grandma's footsteps, and she had passed on. So I was like trying to, you know, keep her legacy alive and. You know, I was good in the academic portion. Like, I was doing excellent. Like, it was great. But when it came down to the skills portions, it just wasn't for me. Mm-hmm. Oof. <laughs> he sees someone outside. Okay. <laughs> my bad. My bad. At the Zeus cameo. <laughs> <laughs> well, in starring the one, the only loudmouth dog that belongs to... 
uh, unfortunate. Did you grab the yeah, injury? Unfortunate. Yeah, unfortunate. <laughs> Uh, he's a good dog for the most part. Just I'm doing things. So what kind of a career are you looking for in the future? Uh, I've had a lot of people tell me that I would make a really good therapist. Okay. Because I, I'm, I guess I'm good at helping, like, talk people out, of, like, help them with their problems, talk it through with them, and then, like, you know, help them come up with a solution or uh, help them at least feel better. Mm. I think part of that stems from like I feel like anyone who not anyone but I feel like certain people who are therapists I feel like they can give advice based on their own life experience or based on things that they've gone through yeah, yeah. and they kind of do that uh, when dealing with other people as well and I mean Okay, Zeus, listen here, buddy. I'm I'm busy right now. <laughs> I'm gonna have to schedule this whining for later. <laughs> Anyways, before my dog really interrupted, I was just basically saying that you know. <laughs> God damn it! It's <laughs> 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 okay. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. That's horrible. This is my dog. <laughs> the timing. <laughs> the impeccable timing. Oh my god. They're scheming against us. <laughs> yeah. It's like you, you, you started making uh, noises, then I started making noises. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> <That's so flattered. laughs> <laughs> I snorted. Uh. But no, like, um, uh, I was basically saying that uh, going off of what you said, like, about helping other people, that's the kind of mentality that I have as well. Like, if I can help someone, uh, then I'm down to do it, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm going to start my own service. You're going to call it. I'm going to call it. I'm going to call it. I don't know what I would call it if I ever did start up like a uh, like a counseling therapist thing. The spicy, spicy therapy. Spicy therapy with your host. <laughs> oh my god! So yeah, I can I, I can sense I can sense that you do like uh, helping people, especially like watching your streams. I try to. I mean, you know, there's only so much that I can do. Uh, uh. And unfortunately, I hate that kind of, I hate the aspect of that because, you know, there, you never want to see anyone, based on my beliefs, you know, I never want to see anyone go through anything. You know, if I can help, then I don't want to, you know, see anyone go through anything negative or, you know, sad or. Mm, yeah, I feel the same way. Because, you know, and I feel like a lot of streamers, especially. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, here, you want to talk? Talk! Get it all out! Speak! <laughs> Tell the people what you speak! Is that so? It's, he's all like, I fucking hate Ashley! He, she never takes me outside! So sick of her shit! Basically, um, my opinion is, is that I feel like a lot of streamers, especially the larger that they become, the more that they start to neglect their audience, um, and I feel like sometimes it's not as purposeful as we would like to think. I feel like, um, yeah, I feel like that, you know, the especially that I've seen chats that get like huge and like, like a lot of people show up and they're like, they're like literally busy. So there's like not much time to re read the comments and stuff. Yeah. I mean, which is understandable, but I feel like there are just certain people who actually don't even try to stay engaged with their audience. They just kind of blow it off like, huh? Whatever. Yeah, yeah. But uh, even when I when I get you know larger, uh, you know if I do, yeah, I'll touch the spider web. <laughs> <laughs> if I were to continue to grow, I would uh, definitely try to maintain as much of a connection with the people watching as possible because you know, I don't know. Yeah, I agree. Uh, 
I was um I was gonna to try to do the same as well, no matter how big I get, because I want I do want to like be able to talk to everyone. I actually want to get to know everyone who comes to the stream and all that. I but, agree, and that's kind of like part of the reason why I think we became really good friends is because like you know we both kind of have the similar interest of like just wanting to uh, I don't I don't know how to put this like we basically just want to make the be as kind as possible and like we both kind of have like dirty minds but we like we're good people at heart and, yeah yeah uh, more things as well like video game wise anime wise like mm -hmm. I feel like we bonded over that and a friendship was born yeah yeah for sure for sure so i want but, to start this whole thing so we can like talk to each other more yeah definitely like i literally like i've even told Anne before that if we live closer like we would be having like video game nights like <laughs> yeah yeah or, like, anime nights like just chilling and eating food and just mm. hanging out like we would like be streaming together like it would be fun mm -hmm. for sure but you're so like, you're so far away <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know it sucks. All the cool people, like I feel like all the people that actually get along and and, and they would actually be like really good friends in real life live so f freaking far away. Yeah. <sighs> I feel like there might be some people who live close by that you know you can get along with. It's just that talking to someone online is a lot easier than talking to someone in person in a way. You know what I mean? I agree. I, I definitely agree with that. Like, uh, for me personally, like, I I don't have any friends in real life at this point. And part of that is because of, like, I do have depression. And it like you said, it's so much easier to talk to someone on the internet than it is to talk to someone in real life. And mm -hmm. not a lot of people can understand that either. And so I feel like as a result, it ruins a lot of uh, relationships, and in this case, it did mine. But, I mean, streaming is another thing that kind of ended that friendship as well, because <clears throat> the person would get irritated whenever I would stream. And, uh, you know, I love to stream, and I wouldn't stream for more than, like, two or three hours, or I would try to keep it to a minimum, but it still pissed that person off. And as a result, you know, it it kind of just ended the friendship i believe well but I, I i'm confused like why would they be irritated by you streaming i don't know <clears throat> i i mean literally like they would get so irritated uh they'd be like oh you know you're not focusing enough on me oh and yeah it was kind of those one of those things and then like they'd be like oh you spend more time with your your boyfriend than you do me and it's like oh yeah I mean, I understand that to some degree because I, I felt like that too as a teenager, like when people had boyfriends and, and they kind of just blew me off to the side. But the thing is, is like, I'm an adult now. Yeah. And, you know, it's not like I'm in a new relationship. Like this is an older relationship. So, I mean, I don't see why people are getting angry about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like one but, of the... Oh, sorry, go on. I, I can continue. I was just like, I don't even know what I was going to say. I was just like ranting <laughs> <laughs> it's fine uh i think that's one of the reasons why i kind of kind of worry about getting into uh, a relationship because i i feel like if i get into a relationship they might get mad at me and be like hey what are you doing like just spending all your time like hours streaming and stuff you spend you can use that time to spend time with me instead you know mm -hmm. so I, I think i hopefully i can be lucky enough to find someone who can understand like streaming is like my hobby and like, they can be like pretty supportive of that maybe you would like to like join in in one of my streams you know like games with I, me yeah i agree i feel like i feel like every relationship should have a balance and uh you know i mean as long as you're not doing anything that, that harms the other person or that isn't like involving cheating or anything like yeah. i feel like i feel like people should be supportive yeah um, for sure because like i'm the one who actually got him into streaming and uh got him to start his channel about streaming mm -hmm. like he was just all pokemon based uh channel at first and then like i started he told me how to stream and i started streaming and then yeah we started but, i mean it's a thing like i feel like if a person really cares about another person they'll set aside their their you know their beliefs about certain things like you know like oh video games this that and the other because like i know some people these days are like they have bad like they have bad i like I'm trying to think of the word they have 
bad perceptions of what video games are. Or they just yeah, yeah, they're yeah. Games. And they're actually really not like they're they're time consuming and they're good. They're a good way to like get out frustration, anger, boredom without like doing anything like reckless. Mm. <clears throat> and I feel like um, you know, if a person really loves one another, they'll set aside like small things like that, like you know, maybe not having the person play video games all day but just setting aside time like we're okay i'll let you do your thing for a little bit and i'll do something of my own yeah and or maybe do it together like be like oh hey let's play uh you know a game online together you know something yeah yeah i love that Emily. exactly i just i just don't understand why people have a bad perception of people playing video games especially parents yeah. because like yeah. you know my parents kind of complain about me playing video games a lot too, but it's all like, hey, you know, I could, instead of doing this, I can like do lots of drugs and getting like exactly. hundreds of girls pregnant. Do you want me to do that instead? <laughs> right. Like, do you want me to flunk out of college, get a whole bunch of girls pregnant, like start drugs, uh, <laughs> you know, just start working in like a, a gang and like doing all these things? Like, I mean, you know, there are worse things that you could be doing. And yeah, you're not. Yeah, exactly. I don't know. I just feel like I don't know. There are just certain things like anime gets a bad rep. Like people who who watch that kind of thing or play video games or listen to certain types of music or mm -hmm. people. I mean, they classify people based on what they do, which I feel is like it's pretty it's stupid. Incorrect. I agree. It's incorrect in a way because I mean, you know, not everyone who plays sports is going to be a jock. Not everyone who plays video games is going to be a nerd or who watches anime yeah. is going to be a weeb or like, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, it's just stupid, but yeah. I mean, labels. <laughs> everyone has like their own interests. Everyone has like their different tastes and stuff, you know? So mm -hmm. you shouldn't yeah. judge a person by what they like. Cause like, you know, you judge a person by what they like you, you might lose out in meeting like cool people like even exactly like i know some people might make fun of people watching anime but those people who watch anime they could be really cool like they could be really like one of the nicest people you ever met you know you, but you won't ever know that because you're busy like just making fun of them yeah exactly and i feel like uh i feel like especially in high school that was like one of the things that people they always make fun of people about that's why i kept it on the down low yeah because people who watched anime were like big nerds or who, who were into trading cards were big nerds or you know they got people would always constantly talk mass crap about them and i already got bullied enough as it was based on my physical appearance i didn't want to have to deal with uh my interest or hobbies getting me uh bullied as well mm. and i feel like now as an adult like you know, people don't really care what your hobbies are as long as you don't get in their way of making money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or as long as you're like, uh, as, as long as you show respect. Exactly, exactly. And I, I kind of like that transition from like being a teenager into an adult and kind of uh, finding mm. a middle ground, I guess you could say, where, I mean, it's not always about who you are, what you're into. It's based on how you treat them or. Yeah, yeah. Uh, how you interact versus in high school if you're different or if you show any signs of difference then you're basically outcasted yeah but i remember there are uh, times in the past people would talk to me about how uh kids in the school like act mean towards them and i <laughs> i was like okay I, I can totally understand where you're coming from because like when you're mm -hmm. growing up as a kid like i i, I don't mean this to like you know hurt anyone's feelings but i feel like kids are stupid and like yeah when, when the kids are stupid they're gonna like play around and be mean because they don't know any better but like as they grow up they'll they realize you know what maybe i should stop being a douche <laughs> and they'll, they'll stop I, being mean i completely agree uh especially in regards to i feel like the older that a person gets yeah, no. I feel like the older that people get as well the more of a maturity level that you gain as well Mm -hmm. and um i don't know i just feel like i think life experience plays a part in it as well like the older that you get at that point the older i mean the more experience you gain like not always necessarily 
But, you know, I feel like versus as a child where you know nothing, where you're sheltered, where your parents, most parents at least, your guardians make sure that you're taken care of and that Mm -hmm. everything's okay, you know. Uh, You know, you never think twice about it. And then you go into the real world as an adult and that's when you realize that, hey, you know, things aren't what they appear, you know, people aren't as mean as they make them out to be. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, you just got to find it. Like, uh, I don't know, I feel like, and then, like, uh, I feel like YouTube especially has been, like, a really good outlet. Like, it's been a really good, uh, it's been, it's been really helpful in regards to, like, helping me come out of my shell. Like, before I did YouTube, like, I would not, like, I was really bad at speaking publicly or, like, you know, even just initiating a conversation. Yeah, like, same here. <laughs> because of youtube it's kind of brought me out of my shell and it's made me like you have to you have to do this in order to connect with people like Mm -hmm. and i've kind of just had to come out of my shell and just you know i was wondering like uh what made you want to start streaming in the first place well i never even knew that i could stream from a playstation 4 like Uh i never considered it and i wasn't really into video games until after i realized that like you know, because I didn't really have anything that I considered a hobby. And because of that, it would be really frustrating. Mm. And it would always get me into arguments with people because they'd be like, oh, fine, you know, go do this, go to that. And I would, I would always tell them it's not as simple as you think it is. Like finding something that you can connect with and, and doing the same thing over and over again is just it gets it gets annoying after a while. Mm. And so uh, I started streaming. And with that, I I found that I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed doing Mm -hmm. things that I love, which, you know, playing video games and then connecting with other people through that. Yeah, yeah. And I found it enjoyable, and I found that to be an outlet as well. Mm -hmm. And it was therapeutic as well as, uh, you know, it it taught me things. Like, it, it helped me with my public speaking. It helped me with being a little bit more confident, uh, Mm -hmm. you know, being able to be authentic with other people and yeah. and not worry to say, mm. I mean, you know, I've had better relationships and friendships with the people that I've met through YouTube than I've had in my personal life. Which I don't know if that's extremely sad or if it says something about me, but um, people don't really, like I said, I mean, people don't really understand the the video game hobby unless they're actually into it as well. Yeah. yeah. Because my friends, uh, you know, they're they're the type that don't really give a crap about it, and as a result, they don't understand, and they get irritated and frustrated. And mm-hmm. I mean, it, it, you know, I support them in the things that they do, but I mean, if they can't support me in the things that I do, then I mean, you go fuck off. <laughs> yeah, and like the person that I was explaining earlier, they told me, uh, like they, they didn't talk to me in a week before uh all this happened it's been two months now oh. and they were like oh i needed a break from you and i'm like what, what friends is that <laughs> <laughs> and you know i haven't heard from that person in over two months they wanted me to go to their graduation i mean they they never even contacted me they never checked to make sure that i was okay after i broke my ankle like i don't even think they gave a shit like and in school, though, I mean, you know, people will, uh, they'll excuse themselves from your lives at different points, and then at different points, they'll try to come back in. And, you know, I've learned that people come in your life for a reason or a season, or they stay for a lifetime, and you just got to decipher who's who and mm-hmm. go from there. Yeah. As you grow older, you're going to, like, come across a lot of people, and you're going to lose friends, and but... Yeah. And that sucks, but you're also gonna gain friends in the in uh as time go goes on as well. I completely agree with that as well. Like um you know, like I was saying, I mean, through YouTube I've made so many amazing connections, so many friendships that yeah. I wouldn't have otherwise like for you with the uh, example, like I would have never even known you existed unless mm. I got on YouTube and you know, unless we had started chatting and mm. It's an amazing thing to think that, you know, mm. you would never have known certain people existed. Yeah, if yeah, you, for if sure. You gone the extra mile and reached out or just even commented in a chat. Yeah, yeah, for sure. 
Why are there so many spiders? I hate spiders. <laughs> spiders inside your house. <laughs> Oh, they're everywhere for some reason. Like, they're in the basement. They're in my room. They're in the living room. They're in every freaking room. <laughs> That's scary. But, uh... And I know it's oh. cooler. It's going to get cooler? <laughs> it's starting to get cooler out, and I know that, like, the cooler it is, they're going to start migrating inside, and I'm like, I'm not oh, ready yeah. for it. Oh, God. <laughs> Bring off the phone. Gotta get, that, gotta get that bug spray ready. Yeah. Bitch, you're gonna die. <laughs> uh, but what were you saying before I interrupted you? I apologize. It's not good. Uh, I was wondering, like, what made you come to uh, my first place? I don't remember what game it was that you were playing. Hold on, let me go back into your videos actually, real quick, and try to pinpoint. I believe it was Persona Five. Oh, Persona Five! Yeah, I was just about to say that, and I saw that, and I love the game. Oh, like, okay. I literally. On a series, and then I was like watching you stream, and you seem like a really cool guy. So I'm like, okay, like someone I could get along with. He's really mm. chill. He's got some jokes up his sleeve. Like <laughs> I can, I can, like I can literally be friends with this guy. And so those are the types of people whose streams I come back to. Like if I feel like they're authentic people, mm. uh, if I feel like I can get along with them, or if they're just actually really good streamers or hilarious. Like uh -huh. I'm more than down to support and. Definitely, you made an impression on me. Like, you seem like really hilarious. And you were playing one of my favorite games to boot. So, that was a big plus as well. <laughs> you all become friends with Ashley. Remember, you gotta play Persona 5. Yes. <laughs> and then, since then, you've played some of my other favorite games. Like, you've played Mario Sunshine. Mm -hmm. You've played um, Kingdom Hearts. Like, a whole bunch of different games. And mm -hmm. I'm just like, okay. <laughs> hey, I'll see you. <laughs> yeah, I think yeah. after you came to my stream, I thought you. Were, I also thought you were a pretty chill person, so that's why I looked at your streams as well. Yeah, I noticed that. Hey, oh, I touched a spider web. <laughs> I was gonna say, uh, yeah, you seem like a chill person, so that's why I went to your streams to check them out. And it's, that's I don't, I don't oh. mean, I don't mean to uh, <laughs> offend you. But okay, we we all know that you don't have the best internet, right? Yes. <laughs> but I always thought it was impressive and kind of inspiring that even though you don't have the the best internet, you're still able to draw a huge crowd, and gain a lot of support. Like for God's sakes, you have yeah. over a thousand subs. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought that was pretty impressive. Oh, sorry. Do. Sorry, say that again? Because you, you cut out. Oh, my bad. <laughs> the it's all internet. Good. <laughs> we were talking about it. it, had to make its presence known. <laughs> I'm here. I am here. <laughs> but no, uh, uh, it gets frustrating at times to have internet that is of lower quality because I do get people that come in and they're like, oh my god, your internet is trash. That lag is horrible. Mm -hmm. And it's no, I, there's nothing I can really do it with my current living situation until I move out. And yeah. I mean, it sucks, but I mean, I still do the best that I can with uh, the situation that I'm in. Yeah, and people will still love your streams. I that's what I really that's what really brightens my days. Just to know that even though my internet is literally on the bottom of the freaking spectrum of the, I don't even know what I'm trying to say, but it's basically <laughs> pretty bad. Yeah. And the fact that people still show up and, and still, mm. like, show support and are still so kind, like, it means a lot. Yeah, because that's, that's the kind of audience I want, like, no matter what, like, they, 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 they love you. They still love you, but so they'll show up no matter what, you know what I mean? Yeah, and I think part of that is uh, based on the personalities that, uh, I feel, because I've told this to somebody before, the type mm. of energy that you put out that is the type of energy that you're going to attract in. Yeah, yeah. So if you're a positive and kind person, that's the kind of people you're going to attract. But if you're, like, really negative and really yeah. sexual, <laughs> like, mm -hmm. really, like, just horrible saying horrible things, like, you're basically racist or sexist or homophobic or whatever you are, you're going to attract that kind of audience. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And uh, that's why I always tell everyone to, like, mm. project out the kind of thing you would, like, you the people that you want to show up to your channel yeah it pretty much mm -hmm. like try to show like 
like treat other people mm-hmm. the way you want to be treated. Exactly. Yeah. Oh yeah, I I uh, I think you kind of showed that like if if the internet isn't at best quality, people should still try to stream because who knows they might you know attract a lot of yeah. people like you did. And I know some people told me like, oh, I don't know if I can stream or not because my internet is not good. I'm like, no, still give it give it a shot. You know, who knows? <laughs> exactly, exactly. Like I I've, I've done the same thing. Like my internet is complete. And utter trash. Like it is <laughs> bad. And like everyone can attest to that too. They'll be like, "Yeah, her internet is like kicking. It is popping. It is like the pain." Is <laughs> but I mean, that doesn't stop me, and I don't think it should stop anyone else. I mean, if it's mm. something that you enjoy, uh, definitely go for it and grasp it by the horns and make it yours. Yeah, it's like you can, as long as you can still be entertaining and also still be like a chill person, you should still yeah. go for it. Exactly, like as long as you can authentically be yourself and enjoy yourself and I mean, like I said, you don't even have to like have a good setup or have good internet. Like my mic was trash for the longest. Really? And yeah, because my it was just bad and it would cut in and out like constantly. Oh, man. And yet, you know, people still came by and they watched and, and they were supportive and I mean that's all I can really ask for, and I feel like if I can do it, anyone else can do it as well. Yeah, and yeah. I'm down to. Some- but um, ooh, like, what's your favorite like movie genre? Like, I personally love like horror films or like romance action. I love children's movies like Disney, uh, Nickelodeon movies. I think I, pre- I think I'm pretty much the same. I think I'm open to watching anything, any kind of movie. Uh, but I'm not really that into uh horror movies. Oh, I love them. I love being scared. Mm-hmm. As long as it's not like something that I feel like I uh, something that I feel like I'll bring into my home, like like yeah. ghosts. Demon- like I don't mess with demons at all. Like, uh-uh. <laughs> why not? <laughs> it could be fun. I don't want to get possessed anytime soon. <laughs> I, I want to keep my innocence. You know, keep your innocence. my, my pure, normal innocence. <laughs> you gotta get. You gotta have to get baptized afterwards. Yeah, get baptized, get sprinkled with holy water, just like yeah. drink it every day. Yeah. I'm out. Like if someone tells me that they're possessed, I am not talking to them ever. <laughs> what, 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 how would what would they tell you that in the first place? It's, it's like if I text you randomly, hey uh, Asha, I think I'm possessed. <laughs> like, it was nice knowing you, buddy. <laughs> I think I I I could be into a horror movie if it had an interesting concept. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I feel like... I just feel like... Demons are one of the things that I won't mess with at all. I won't touch a Ouija board. Like, no, nope, I ain't going... <laughs> it ain't happening to me. Okay. It ain't happening. Welcome to the Nerd Girl Adventures Ouija uh, stream. We're going to mess with Ouija. At 3 a.m. Gonna... <laughs> oh, oh, oh. I'll put my, my dog will play that. I won't. I'll put his paws on the board. <laughs> I think if I, if I play that with you, I think I would try to make it as scary <laughs> as possible for you. I'll make it just like spell out Ashley. Oh, I would die. Like, literally just have to handle it. And then just like, all dark and creepy. <laughs> uh huh. Have, uh-huh. have, you, have you seen that? Uh, it's like a most recent, one of the most recent horror movies, uh, Quiet Place? I haven't. I've heard that it's really freaky. Yeah, I, I, I want to watch it because it's a horror movie, but like, it has a pretty interesting concept. It's. It's pretty much like these. This family lives in a place where they gotta be quiet because if they don't, it it will it'll, uh, it'll attract monsters. Mm-hmm. So they the the watching them watching them the way they live is pretty interesting. Like when they walk when they walk outside, they have to put sand down and take off their shoes and like walk on the sand so they don't like you know uh, make any noise and That's stuff. Actually, it's actually pretty interesting because you would never expect like that sound would attract something like mm. dangerous or deadly like 
I, I think it's also pretty interesting because like I, I heard when my bro went to watch it, uh, mm-hmm. it felt like they were in the movie because everyone in the audience was quiet. And the whole movie, the whole movie was quiet as well. So like when you, when a noise actually happened in the movie, that you kind of freak out. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if it's that, actually would be like a really fun movie to go see it and uh, go look at the window. Mm-hmm. It'd be a fun movie to go see in theater because, I mean, the audience it's our, it's naturally supposed to be like a quiet environment. Yeah. And then adding that the movie it's supposed to be a quiet thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I would be freaked out if somebody were eating the popcorn. I'd be like, Shut up, what are you doing? <laughs> the monster's coming. <laughs> You're gonna get us killed. <laughs> I would literally be like, Oh, y'all are gonna die. I'm leaving you. <laughs> like, that's just like, because you never know how realistic some of these movies can be, mm-hmm. which is. Anything because some of them like I like the more realistic ones like you know that you can picture happening like the purge like yeah, that yeah. freaks me out because mm. it could it could actually become a thing like if yeah, people yeah. really wanted to be with the president okay to like that could actually yeah. happen and we're all screwed. Mm-hmm. I, I I never been too big into the the purge movies. I think I tried watching the first one. I was like, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> It's okay. Well, me personally, okay. it's more of the concept that freaks me out than anything. Yeah, yeah. Because I mean, you know, you know, what if that actually did happen? That would be terrifying. Mm-hmm. You wouldn't be able to trust anyone. Yeah, I or it would be France one second, then when I purge starts, I see you break nah. inside my house. I'm like, oh, okay, this is how it's gonna be. <laughs> yeah, and then you both end up surviving, and then they try to play it off like nothing happened. And it's like, no, like. <laughs> nope. Making a list. Uh, <laughs> right, I got your name. I know where you live. <laughs> I, I, someone uh, made a good point about the Purge movies where they might mainly just focus on people killing each other. You never see anyone mm-hmm. stealing shit. Like, if the Purge happened, I'd be like, all right, going to GameStop to steal a Nintendo Switch. Here we go. <laughs> I'd be still all the video game stuff. I'd be like, okay, I don't even worried about. I'm not even worried about getting like kills or anything. I'm just like yeah. getting everything that I can. Yeah, I think if it actually did happen, I would try to make an agreement with everyone that I live around. And be like, okay, no killing. We're just gonna work together and just go and steal shit. Okay, okay. <laughs> right. I think the one purge movie that caught my interest was the one where I forgot who who it was but this person was against the purge yeah and she, and she was gonna vote against it and people are like you know what during the purge we're gonna fuck her up and i thought oh that's really cool like that sounds like something like should be in the video game you know what i mean dude what if they may i would buy that if they turn that into a video game like i'm dead serious like mm-hmm. like, like i can imagine having purge like in a, a Fortnite type uh scenario yeah, yeah. Like a brawl and like just having people team up or do it on their own. And then you have the ability to backstab them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's how that's that's how you really ruin friendships. You think Mario Party ruins friendships? Oh man. <laughs> hurt more friendships. <laughs> Dude, that actually would be a really awesome video game idea. Yeah, yeah. Write that down right now. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that's actually really genius. Do you uh? Do you have like? Do you sometimes come up with like really cool concepts for like games or like animes? Yeah, all the time, all the freaking time. <laughs> like, like, give me some, give me some uh, ideas. I'm trying to think. Well, I had like an idea for an anime, kind of like where. Mm-hmm. There's like, a, like, it's like, I don't know, like a paranormal anime, I guess you could say, like where there's a girl who can see ghosts or she's like a medium or something. Like she has some type of ability to communicate with the dead. Okay. And basically her and her team, they go to like, uh, they get called in on a, on a thing with all the higher ups and they're basically looking down on her and her team because they're not as experienced. And basically something happens. She ends up, you know, something, something like that. Like, I don't know, just like different things like i don't know i would have to pull up my laptop and like like actually because i've written oh, okay. like uh different things mm-hmm. 
because like i'm like really into story writing so i could come up with a bomb plot like if i just sit down yeah. and i just like smoke some crack <laughs> and then just get right to the ideas down yeah like smoke some <laughs> smoke some devil's lettuce and just be like yeah man <laughs> i <laughs> I was funny if you get really drugged up one day to write some ideas for anime, and next thing when you woke up, when you look at the piece of paper, you just see like, oh, oh, like it's like a bunch of scribbles. You're like, what the fuck did I even write? <laughs> <laughs> right, like what did I do last night? <laughs> I uh, yeah, like what are some of the ideas that you've had for like, like well, animes or video games? Oh, for animes, uh. I kind of just came up with a cool ending for one. Like, Ooh, for example, for example, this let's say this character he has the the power to uh, stop time, but mm. like, whenever he uses that power, his lifespan goes down. Right? Ooh, so, like the more okay. he, the more he uses it, like you know, the less time he has to live. So I thought mm. a cool ending would be like his whole town is in trouble. Like he's getting destroyed and shit, so he stops time. He stops ta time to like save every single person. But after he mm -hmm. uses that power, like he only has like like a year left to live, or like you know. So like in, within that year, um, he just tries to enjoy life. You know, everyone like tr treats him as a hero, and you know he tr tries to spend the rest of that time with his family and all that. I like that. I like that concept. Mm -hmm. I always like cheesy endings, though. Like not necessarily cheesy, but like. I like when a character that you like doesn't die, I guess you could say. <laughs> but I'm, I'm biased because I like when a character does die, like if it's like a decent death. But yeah. like with Akame got kill, they killed almost all of the characters. Oh, what, what, what? Kill all the characters? They, like at Akame got kill, they killed like the, like, they killed the villains, they killed the heroes, they had like some... <laughs> Up shit in that anime, like with the clown and the kid. Like, oh my. <laughs> yeah, I, just, I agree with you. I think I kind of know with that because I do sometimes like it when they kill off like a character that you love because it means like you know the story writers had the balls to like make that happen instead of being like, hey, everyone's living, everyone's all good, Eric's everything's happy. <laughs> Yeah, because it's just like in like certain like big animes, like they don't kill certain characters off because of that reason. Like with Naruto, you would never hear them killing Naruto off. Yeah, yeah, I think that would be cool, but yeah, that's not gonna happen. I think in, the thing that made me kind of upset, I'm not gonna like ruin it, but I just, I would say at least one of the main he heroes or whatever in that show dies. I'm like, wow. dude, only, 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 only like one. <laughs> Right, like why? Yeah, it's like you need to do more, do more, <laughs> make more people die. No, no. Let the genocide begin. <laughs> <laughs> but no, like um, uh, I'm trying to think. Like I'm more of like a story kind of writer. Like I come up with like these on the spot things, but I can never finish them. Like uh, there was like one story I read in a while ago, and it was basically about a character that like. Basically, they get, they die in, on Earth, and basically, they get put into another, like, another realm, I guess you could say, and they call, and I named it, like, Synthus. Like, this story was called Synthus, A World Between Worlds, where basically, it's basically, Synthus is basically purgatory, but instead of, like, being determined to go to heaven or hell, you led such, like, a normal life that you didn't go to either one. Huh. But you basically got thrown onto this other realm, and that's where you live the rest of, like, whatever life you had left. Like, that's where you still continue to live, like, where you never died. You stayed the age that you died at. That's pretty interesting. And, uh, basically, nobody knows that they're in, like, basically no one realizes that they're in this, like, in a separate world. Like, that they actually lived on another realm. Hmm. Uh, and this character kind of breaks through that and realizes that, hey, this isn't correct like i you know like what is going on and basically goes on a journey to try to figure out how to get back to where they came from and uh, all the while avoiding you know avoiding demons and angels and like people that want to take that character back to uh, back to synthesis and like you know obviously the synthesis guards and then like just all this all this other stuff and it was it was a really interesting story 
but I never finished it. Oh, that's a pretty interesting. Yeah, I kind of like, and then I get like moments where I'm like, okay, I'm gonna write in this story, I'm gonna make it happen, and then I never do. Yeah, I feel it's, I feel like people do that a lot. Like they always tell themselves, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna accomplish this, and, and then they just end up taking a nap. Yeah, <laughs> oh, I'm gonna get all this. I'm gonna clean the house. I'm gonna do all this. Nope. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I was gonna ask. Like, you came up with interesting concepts for like games. How do I come up with the concepts? Oh no, like if you ever came up with a concept for games, but uh, yeah, that too. I think that <laughs> that's uh, interesting too. Uh, game wise, I've never really came up with a concept per se. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I'm I'm more of like an anime kind of like I can come up with ideas for anime more than I can video games because. I feel like it takes a genius to really come up with an idea for a video game and implement it because there's so oh, many yeah. different aspects. Of it. I mean, you have to have characters, dialogue, you have to have, like, depending on the type of game, oh, like if okay. you're doing a first person shooter, third person shooter, if you're doing like a, a visual, uh, visual novel game or like whatever it is that you're, you're doing, like, yeah, yeah. you have to have the proper, uh, you know, but anyways, like, uh, when thinking like by ideas they just kind of come to me like uh i can just be sleeping and just kind of have a dream like you know just dream and i'll be like oh my god this dream is like legit like i'm gonna write this down like and i mean i love the whole just random like it's it's like random like i can get ideas randomly and think that they're really good ideas mm. and then other times i don't mm. uh what about you how do you come up with like your ideas or what are some of the video game concepts that you've come up with uh idea wise uh i think we were talking about before uh it just comes to me when i stay up late at night <laughs> it, just, yeah. it, just randomly, it just randomly comes to me i'm like oh that, that's a good idea <laughs> yes but uh with video game concepts uh i just have like simple ones like i never really branched them out like put more detail into them i just thought like oh. maybe like one idea would be like <laughs> i think I, at the time i was like really into dubstep <laughs> so i thought in you know those games where you do lots of combos kind of like uh they may cry or like uh yeah, yeah. bayonetta i thought it'd be cool like you play those games and when you're in the middle of battle you just hear drum beats in the background but when you do combos you just start hearing like you know dubstep sound effects you know like all like like lots of wobbles and bass steps, uh, bass drops. And that was actually a really cool concept, though. I like that. Yeah, yeah. And I think another one I came up with is like uh, I think the game it all takes place with like someone watching like tapes of these movies. Mm-hmm. So so like when you're like. When you're playing a game, it's all it's pretty much all a movie. Like it's it's pretty much all a movie that the person's watching. So like whenever the person in the movie dies, it just rewinds. Like he has like the rewind sound effect, and he has that rewind uh, button popping up, and that's how like that's how you respond. <laughs> and every time you be a level, that's like that's one movie done. So the person watching they they switch to another tape. Something, something oh, like that. nice. Yeah. I like that concept, though. That's actually pretty interesting, like, how that kind of thing would play out into, like, a video game. Like, yeah. would it yeah. be, it would be, like, more of a horror game? Like, more of, like, a, what kind of game would you say? Because I feel like it could be a really good horror game. Yeah, I think it would be a, a good horror game. Yeah. I mean, that'd be really interesting to see that in a, a horror aspect. Mm-hmm. Or do you uh, have any, like, spooky things ever happened to you? Like, that you oh, like, was kind of paranormal? Um, a ton how about you let's hear yours have you had any uh i would say so but i feel like it can be explained (laughs) you know i mean i feel like paranormal stuff there's no explanation to them it's just it's just weird but the stuff that happened to me i feel like it can just be explained so i can't i don't think it would be considered paranormal Mm -hmm. but there there were a few times where um He's like, starting again. Yeah. <laughs> Hold on, I'm about to put him out. Okay. All right. You want to go outside? You can go outside. <laughs> Come here. Come here. Give me one second. 
For all of you viewers watching at home, this is what happens when you decide to get a dog. It bothers you. <laughs> and you never get a break. Oh yeah, okay. Uh, like, well, oh, there was some nights where, uh, for some reason, I ran the uh, ass uh, candy bag, uh, fell on the floor, made a loud ass noise, and I was like, "What the hell?" And it happened. It happened twice, but I f it, it, it was when I was in that situation. It, it was pretty spooky, but I feel like it can be explained. But maybe because like, you know how sometimes when you leave something hanging near uh, edge of like a table or a counter. Oh, it would just fall down. Maybe that's the case. Yeah. You know? Mm. And there was another time where, uh, uh, I think my dog was downstairs. I was just chilling upstairs. And I heard, like, Here's some information. What the fuck? <laughs> oh, oh that, was my, that was my phone. <laughs> I was like, what the heck is happening? <laughs> um,. Yeah, I heard uh, growling downstairs, and I was all like, "Oh, that's just Cena." But there was one time when I was hanging up, hanging out upstairs with Cena, and he was in my room as well, and I still mm -hmm. heard growling downstairs. And that's when oh. I was all, and that was when I was like, oh. "Okay, right, time to leave the house." <laughs> no. <laughs> but like, like my, I think my bro made a good point where it's probably like cats or dogs outside, because there's lots of cats, you know, a lot of like stray cats and stuff. That was probably it. <laughs> yeah. What were some uh, paranormal stuff that happened to you? Well, I've told these a lot on my channel, but um, basically one of the weirdest experiences that I've had is um, basically uh, me and one of the people that were one of my friends, we were using a ghost app at my house, and my mom was here. Okay. And... It wasn't responding to me asking questions, and it wasn't responding to my friend, and we were using her phone. Mm -hmm. And so out of just, like, hilarity, like, we, we asked my mom, we're like, oh, hey, ask it a question. Like, ask it who it's here for. So she did that, and we it responded. Huh. And it said my name. It said Ashley. What the fuck? <laughs> and then we asked it again, and then it said Ash. So at that point, I'm like, okay, we're turning this off. <laughs> and uh, basically, my mom went into the kitchen, and the cabinet drawer flew open, and dishes fell out at her. Oh, Jesus. And I mean, I can understand if it would have been my phone, and it said my name, but it wasn't my phone, and it was hers, and we were using, like, a an EVP type thing. Yeah. It was spoopy. It does sound like a spoopy experience. And, like, there was another time, like, I told my mom this, and she didn't believe me, and my dad didn't believe me, but uh, there was a time where I was in my dad's truck, and I was sitting out in the dark, and I was talking on the phone with a friend because we were getting ready to leave at, like, 11 o'clock at night to mm. go somewhere. Yeah. And uh, I, I saw, like, a shadow out of the corner of my eye, and the next thing I know, the, sh the truck started shaking. Like, not violently, but it just started mm -hmm. shaking like, a little bit, like, and it was freaking me out, and there was no one there, nice. and uh, shortly after, my dad came out, and I'm just, like, I just kept my mouth shut, because I knew he wouldn't believe me. <laughs> That's really weird. That oh, hurt. there's, like, a couple more I can tell you, and I'll get your opinion on them. Okay. Before, this is, like, this happened many years ago, I'd say back in 2007, 2008. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my brother, he has, I have a little brother. Okay. He had, uh, he had a lot of issues growing up. He wasn't able to speak until he was four. He wasn't able to eat like solid foods until he was like four or five. Like he had a lot of issues, like both, uh, learning wise and, and physical wise. So, uh, you know, he wasn't able to talk, eat any of that. And he was like, really like meant like, um, educational wise, he was like very much behind people in his age group. Okay. So this is what makes it all the more creepier. So my grandpa had passed away when he was really little, and this is right around the time that my brother had learned how to talk. Um, so he was, let me see, he was born in 2002. He was around five, four or five. And uh, he would look, he randomly looked up in his closet when my grandma was there, 
and he said good night to my grandpa who had passed away he was like good night grandpa love you and he did that for about a year and uh, until finally the last thing he said when he talked to my grandpa was he said his good he said good night and he looked at us and said grandpa's in a bad place now and then he went to bed and you never spoke to your brother again. <laughs> right. <laughs> and then really he told creepy. me, like, there was only one other time, and and my mom remembers this, there was only one other time where he spoke to another thing that wasn't my grandpa. Mm. And this freaked me the fuck out, because it, he was like, he was like, Ashley, there's a girl in your room, and she doesn't like you. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I was scared and then um, there was one other time that I really freaked out like I literally started crying I was freaked out and this was about a year or two ago like um, no this was actually this year this year I'm oh, pretty really? sure it was because no one was here and I think this is when my mom left oh okay she was either she had either left left or she had gone to stay somewhere for the night or she i don't know i don't know the mm. situation but basically uh i had gone i was going from my room and i was going into the living room and i was in my hallway and uh, from my hallway i was looking into the kitchen and i just saw this male silhouette like on the wall and it was walking like it was like moving closer <laughs> and i started it crying i was freaking out because i because you know like, I'm home alone when I see this male silhouette figure just walking towards me. Yeah. So then I ran over to my dad's, and I was crying. And I'm like, Dad, there's something in the house. We need to get a priest. Aww. And he just, at, first, at first, he thought that there was a break-in. Like, because literally of how freaking, how frantic I was. I was, like, literally, like, I was scared. Oh. And uh, he, he eventually laughed it off, and he said, oh, there's nothing over there. And I'm like... You don't know. <laughs> you don't understand, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was literally like, like that. Oh, uh, hello. It's just something weird about um, going back to your little brother. Just something weird about like little kids being able to see things that you can't, or like even like yeah. animals seeing things that you can't exactly like um another experience that i've had that was really weird is that like whenever i would have my headphones in like Mm. years ago um every time that i would like be watching something or listening to something with my headphones i would hear whispering yeah but it was i couldn't distinguish it because it was low but the louder that i would turn the volume up the louder it would get but not it would still like it, it just wouldn't be to the point where i could hear what it was saying and it freaked me the hell out the hell? Hey. That was soft. But yeah, I mean, I've had some pretty weird experiences overall. Mm-hmm. Yeah, none of mine compares, compares to yours at all. <laughs> Mine's just like simple, small stuff. Yours is like I... silhouettes walking around, little brother being like, hey, grandpa. <laughs> I know, and my mom will even like confirm that too because like she literally. It was weird. Mm-hmm. And, like, I mean, it would have... I don't, What made it creepier is that, you know, he didn't know. Like, he was like... Oh, that scared me. <laughs> that <literally> scared me. <laughs> but, like, what really made it even creepier is that he didn't understand. Like, you know, he was, like... He was so far behind his age group, and, like, he was struggling with all this stuff that, like, it didn't make sense how he could have known any of that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what made it ten times creepier. I think it'd be even creepier if he's like t- start talking in like a weird voice, like a really, really like deep voice out of nowhere. Oh, that would freak me the fuck out. <laughs> be like, good night, Grandpa. I'll be like, oh my god, we got a possession. Time to get priest. I got the priest number on speed dial. It's okay. <laughs> I got this. <laughs> Oh my god, but that's scary because a lot of like, um, from what I've gathered by like looking at, into movies and stuff like that, and uh, apparently like a lot of priests don't practice like, like um, exorcisms anymore. Mm. 
Like, there's, there's only, like, a few people who are certified to do exorcisms. I didn't even know that you had to be certified. <laughs> I'd like to be like, hey, I can do an exorcism. I'm going to go over to your house right now. It's, like, it's literally not safe at all. And, uh, you know, I mean, getting into that kind of thing is just dangerous in itself. Like, I mean, you can expel the demon from someone and then have it, like, literally cling to you. And oh. then bring it home. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's why I wouldn't get into it. I'd be like, okay. Okay. So You're if, dead. I, if I expel a demon and bring it to your home, ah! <laughs> we could still no. we could still be friends, right? No. <laughs> no. Apparently, there's like a haunted hotel uh, mm -hmm. around where I live, mm -hmm. and my friend she wanted to go there and check it out, and I'm like, nope, <laughs> no, no. Right. She's like, you're scared? Like, fuck, yeah, I'm scared. I don't want to go over there. <laughs> I want to get possessed. What do you mean? Yeah, yeah. After watching all these movies and shit, I don't want to go over there. But, like, it's it's a hotel, so, like, I didn't know what she really had in mind. Like, did she, like, want us just to walk around or actually spend the night there? Because mm -hmm. if, if she wanted to spend the night there, fuck that. <laughs> but if she just wanted to walk around, I think I'll be cool with that. Right, like we can walk. We're we're just not gonna stay here. Yeah. We're just not gonna. I mean, if we find something that's cool, I can just leave whenever and not have to worry about leaving. Yeah, yeah. Like I don't think I could stay in a haunted hotel. I would be too freaked out. <laughs> what 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 if it was for your viewers though? What if they're like, hey, Ashley, I would really love it if you stream yourself. At haunted hotel. They better be paying for my trip there. They better be paying. For the <laughs> they better be paying for the therapy. <laughs> I'm just saying, I I don't mess with that kind of thing. Yeah. Especially yeah. if there's demons. Oh, uh, uh girl. Nope. <laughs> so do you, so do you but, actually believe in ghosts and demons? Or? Oh, I do. I do. After all my experiences, I believe. <laughs> I am a believer. I, I I don't think I actually believe, but just knowing that there's a possibility still kind of scares me. Oh, I feel you. Once you experience that shit, it'll fuck you up for life. <laughs> Sausage party reference. <laughs> <laughs> Once you see that shit, it'll fuck you up for life. Good luck! <laughs> I remember watching that, like, come on. I've watched that a million times, dude. Oh, yeah. I watched it only once at a movie theater. I thought it was funny, but just the ending. <laughs> I was like, oh, God. That ending was really just out of control. <laughs> it was. I was like, okay. So the taco got to be with the bun after all. <laughs> a lot with the sausage and the bagel and the burrito. That, that, the, the poop, and the, uh, and the condom part, that, that kind of disturbed me. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that poor condom. <laughs> he didn't even know what hit him until it hit him. <laughs> Jesus. He was probably just minding his own business. Yeah, he's like, oh, I love life. Oh, God. Make it stop. <laughs> so on that uh, good note, do you want like do you want to call it quits? We can after uh, that interesting, uh, interesting, interesting conversation. <laughs> All right. So uh, you want you want to give a shout out, like see, tell people what uh, to expect for uh, from your channel? Sure. Uh, basically, my channel, Nerdy Girl Adventures, I play a lot of Fortnite, Black Ops 3, I play uh, Dead by Daylight, I play, like, uh, I've been trying to play Kingdom Hearts, I play Undertale, uh, what else did I play? Just other things. Is other it Dead things. by Daylight, Ray? Right? Or... Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, or something else that, I don't remember, but I play a variety of different games, uh, I love a majority of the same games that Anne does, so mm. I'm going to try eventually to do some of the games, but maybe not all of them. Mm. So like I said, Kingdom Hearts, uh, I love the older Mario games. Mm. Like, 
Final Fantasy, stuff like that. Uh, but uh, yeah, and uh, my channel is all about uh, showing support for other channels, for being like a very caring and kind channel. And uh, yeah, I'm always there for anyone if they need me. So yeah, you, just show you like the raids. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. But uh, what about you, Anne? What would you like to tell the viewers over on my channel about you and your spicy channel? Oh yeah, I'm uh, I'm a variety streamer like Ashley as well. I like to play all kinds of games. Right now, I'm playing Kingdom Hearts. I'm I'm I think I'm about to beat it, and I'm also in the middle of playing uh uh Sumar Sunshine. And I told people already, like after I finish Kingdom Hearts, uh, I was gonna start trying to play Skyward Sword. So that's gonna be interesting, and uh, while 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 I'm in the middle of playing those games, uh, I like sometimes to take a break and play other games as well. Like I sometimes enjoy playing, you know, some Hearthstone or some other multiplayer games, uh, especially with the uh, viewers or with friends. Mm -hmm. Like right now, I'm trying to play Minecraft with a friend. So yeah, you can look forward to all that. And uh, outside of streaming, like I'm trying to do other content as well. Like, like I sometimes do vlogs. Or like ram like highlights of uh funny moments food from eating. streams. Wait, what? <laughs> Random food eating ASMR. The yeah, yeah, yeah. Eating ASMR amazing. <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I think that's uh that's it. Yeah, that's all folks. Yeah. Oh, thanks for uh watching and listening everyone. I hope you all have a good day. Take care everyone. Bye guys.